You are welcome to the URFC plug, the show where we get to decipher everything URFC, everything football. We are not talking about tax. In this next hour, we are simply going to be uh, talking about the name of the game that uh, is loved worldwide. And uh, with me on set is a gentleman called Patrick Ocheng, aka Pato, who is going to be sharing with us a lot about what has been able to get accomplished this particular season where the team is doing so well. Patrick, yes. welcome to your show. <laughs> Thank you. I'm uh, very excited. To be honest, uh, it's something that has been in the pipeline and uh, uh, if there is someone who is uh, excited about the whole plan working out and the project finally uh, getting its debut, I must be the happiest person right now. So I can't wait to get started to give people all but spots concerning uh, the mighty URA Football Club. And uh, in, in that very regard, we are not going to waste any time. We are going to get right into it. And you, you're going to have to tell us, Patrick, we are here. Uh, almost getting closer to the halfway point of the season. 17 goals have been scored by the team of the hour. And uh, the thing about these goals is that they've been evenly distributed. Okay? Tell us, what could the secret be? What is behind this surge in form? T walk, walk us through you know, that, that entire picture. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, there is uh, a specific... Uh, a specific reason as to why the team is performing well. If you are uh, to recall, for those people who have been following uh, URA Football Club for a while, even the other season uh, when we finished uh, fourth in, in, on, on the table, we were actually the best team in the second round. So I must say, I think URA Football Club started from where we left it last season. Though I must admit we started slow in the first round, we drew 1-1 to Mbara City in, uh, in Kacheka Stadium in Barra, that was our opening match. Imagine of all teams. Yes. No, but Barra City has always been a hard team to crack down. Uh, I think we do not have any win against them, and they do not have any win against us. All the games we have played against Barra City have all gone to stalemates. 0-0, zero, 1-1. Zero, one, one. If there is a goal we have scored against Barra City, the most of goals we've scored against them have actually been won. So, all the results we have against Mbara City are either 0-0 zero, zero or 1-1. One, one. So I must say, it, it's a team that we cannot wait to beat in the second round. And I, don't get me wrong, I'm not hating on the team. All I'm saying is that they, they, they are not a big name team, you know, the pedigree and all. Yeah, they, they may not be a big team, but they're a bogey side. It, it, it's a side that when it's going to face uh, URA, it comes all out. You saw, it beat Vipers just recently here, this week. So it shows you that it's not an easy team. Though, as well, if you look at the name and maybe the pedigree and the titles, it does not have much to say in its cabinet. But then it's a hard team to crack down. Speaking of big name teams, Patrick, mm -hmm. I would like you to uh, share with the viewers, because we, we could be here, we are definitely excited about the team. I'm a fan, you're a fan. Of course, in your mind, you think this, this team is a huge team, yeah? Uh, to the viewers out there, Patrick is going to, you know, just cast a, 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 a light on what it is we mean when we say that your AFC is, is one of the big teams in the country. Give us a brief history about this club and uh, where it has been able to get to date from, you know, where it has been. Uh, first of all, when we talk of uh, a team being a big team, uh, URA Football Club was founded in uh, 1997. That's when it was established. And uh, I would profoundly say it is one of the teams that has won the most trophies, the youngest teams, because founded in 1997 to 2021, if you to do quick math, those are supposed to be around uh, 24 years. Yeah, yeah. So you're done with campus? Yes. Had yes, it been a human being, this yes. person is done with yes. campus for, and they're probably on their first you, hustle. Yeah, if you to look at the most youngest teams in the Uganda Premier League, URA is among them. And it's the one that has won the most trophies because if you're to talk of the Uganda Premier League Super Cup back then, we have won four titles. We won one title in the season of 2005 2006, then won another in the season of 2007 2000, uh, 2008, then one, no, it was 2006 2007, 2004 2005, then again won another in 2008 2009, and the latest 
that we have in our trophy cabinet is the uh, Uganda Premier League trophy of the 2010-2011 season. So since then, we have not yet tested any success as when it comes to lifting the trophy. And it can tell probably why the boys are hungry for more, why the boys are playing their hearts out, because it's 10 years dating back to the last time we lifted a, a, a league trophy. So the boys want to lift this. I, I don't think we have very few players. If I'm not mistaken, we don't have any players who won this trophy with us in our squad this season. And very few of them have actually lifted a Uganda Premier League trophy. So I think they are all out fighting for it. We have very few players who have won the Uganda Premier League with other teams, of course, but not with URF Football Club. And uh, moving away from the League Cup, we have four League Cups. And then we also have uh, Uganda Cups. We have three Uganda Cup titles. So this shows you that this is a team. However, I, would, I don't want to call it young because we are, we are 20 year now, 21 years old. There are teams that uh, have, there are teams that were formed in 1963, the likes of KCCS. Patrick, ladies are watching this show. Yes. And uh, they're out there and they're wondering, this guy is talking about the, the, the Uganda Premier League, then he's talking about the Uganda Cup. Someone would want to know distinctively What's the difference between these two? The Uganda Premier League is the top tier. It's, it's the highest league of football in the country. The same way, you know, very many people are obsessed with the European uh, trophies. Mm -hmm. So let me try to break it down for them. The same way they see the English Premier League. O La Liga. O La Liga in Spain. In England, it's the English Premier League. So in Uganda, the highest top tier of, of football is the Uganda Premier League. Then the next is the FIFA Big League in England, which is the Premiership. So, when we're talking of the Uganda Premier League, we are talking about the highest, the top tier league in the country. It's the one that URA has won four times. Four times. Then when we talk of the Uganda Cup, the Uganda Cup is uh, the same way you would say FA Cup, FA Cup. In, 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 in England. So here is when you have the teams, some from the FIFA Big League and the, the, the Uganda Premier League, tussling it out right from the round of 64. Of course, there are those teams that first play themselves before the round of 64. Mm -hmm. They first play themselves, they, round, they, they call them preliminary rounds, I would say. Then, for the Uganda Premier League teams, we come in in the round of 64. After playing the round of 64, 32 teams, it's, it's, a, it's a knockout stage. 32 teams are out, then go to the round of 32, then to the round of 16. Then from round of 16, that's when you come to the quarterfinals. Knockout football. Yes, which has eight teams. Now, from the quarterfinals, you go to the semis, which has four teams, then the finals. So, in that cup, Uganda Cup, which is now called the Stanbic Uganda Cup, URA has won three titles. So, overall, we have seven titles won as a club. So, that is some success for the club. Even if we have taken a while without lifting any silverware, uh, it's something that someone would say, the club can be proud of. The trophy cabinet is getting dusty. We Someone would add you. We want to clear up the dust. <laughs> we want to clear up the dust. We need to. Yeah, quite just that last season, what kind of affected us a little bit was COVID. Otherwise, we were one of the best teams in the Uganda Cup uh, because we came up to the round of 16. We were supposed to play uh, Waxi Giants in the round of 16, but then. COVID came and it couldn't happen, so everything was cancelled. But this season, we go again, the boys are rearing, the boys are doing all the best that they can. The technical team, the club, of course, you are the mother body, giving all the support it can to make sure that everything is in place. Administration, the technical team is all right, the players and everyone involved with the club, making sure that everything is at stake. And the fans are rooting for yeah, you. Yeah, the fans. You know. The fans are the 12th player. It's very sad that we cannot have them on the pitch because of COVID-19. But uh, we, we, we thank you very much. Uh, you know, Twitter Twitter is buzzing whenever you are as a football match. And uh, it, it reminds me of people who say, because today someone was telling me, you are a has only three fans. And I was telling them, it's not about the three fans. You are actually has... A lot of fans. It's only that they do not come out to talk. But now when the publicity has started, what was lacking was the publicity bit of it. But otherwise the fans are there. With the publicity and visibility, you're going to see the fans. And passing. now the fans have their own show? Yes. Uh, on, on which they can come and, and, and make some comments, you know. Get involved. 
you you could share your opinion you know about the show about the club about the direction that the club is taking A show that is bringing the fans, bringing the stakeholders closer to the club. Uh, we want to make it a weekly show every Thursday. Uh, no matter whether they are games or not, we feel like there is something that can be talked about. There is something that can be shared to the fans who are already there, or maybe to also pull some fans. I'm very sure there are some people who are going to start following URAE because they have got to hear about the club history. Probably there are some people who are following URA Football Club but didn't even know that it has ever won a league. So this, this is what this show is all about. Making you understand more about URA Football Club. Going into the depth. You, you, you just don't need to support. Because you may support. It's something else falling in love with the club. And it's something different understanding the club. So the show is for the fans. By the fans. This is just a launch. That's why we have this. Uh, next, next up, maybe the next show, we want to bring on a, the team captain or a player or the coach or even a fan. So it's, it's, it's a show. What people should expect from, from this show is we want to bring the fans closer to the club. We want to bring all the stakeholders closer to the club. We want to bring the information live to the fans because what we put on social media at times is something that has already happened. Mm -hmm. We bring on results, games that we've played, games that we've ever played. We don't bring things that we have not yet played. The only thing that we bring that we have not yet played is maybe the artwork of a match we are to have. But usually we... Just see them on pitch. We don't know how they joined the football club. So we want to give them a platform to tell their story. So this is all about the URFC plug show. There is a lot more coming. A lot more coming. Not only us, of course, this is the launch. That's why we're here. The next coming shows, are, one of us may not be here. So we're going to have players come on. We're going to have the coaches. We're going to have URS staff. We're going to have quizzes on here. We, we, we can organize a quiz and have people here compete live on air. People are going to be winning stuff. Yes, people are going to be winning stuff. So all this is going to be packed. I can call it action packed. And it's only getting started. And it's only going to grow bigger and bigger and better. Indeed it is. Uh, Sorry, one of our sponsors. Yeah, they're one of our water sponsors. Yeah. We'll make sure the, the team... Hydrate. It's only fair that we, we even on the show, we get to yeah. to hydrate with the rain. Sorry, Patrick. Yes. Tell me about Cromwell. I know there are many guys who are banging the goals in, but Cromwell and Mukwalia are standing out. When you talk of Cromwell, he's known for his name. He's called actually a bang, Cromwell Rothomio. If I go by his name, a bang, he actually keeps banging teams and banging in the goals. Cromwell is uh, one of uh, our forwards. when the season began in, in, in December because uh, 
because of, I might say, COVID. So with COVID, he did not start with the first phase of the season. The first five games we had, he did not play them. But boy, oh boy, the boy has already scored five goals in his last six games. That shows you the qualities that he has. He came on, his first match actually was against Mida in Tororo, our away match. That talks about hunger, that's, yes. that talks about quality, that yes. talks about uh, the, the mental fitness yes. of a player. Yes, it shows you that even if I was out, I didn't play the first five games, he wasn't in action. Because recall, before the season returned in uh, December, we had spent almost nine months without any football, meaning the teams are not playing. While others were spending nine months without football, Cromwell actually spent a year without football. But the first game he has, boy scored a hat-trick. And then he didn't stop there. He has scored three goals in our last three games. So that shows you the type of player he is. And for us as, uh, as, 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 as the administration, for us as a club, we are happy when our forwards are scoring because that's what they are there to do. If they are getting the goals in and they are scoring, then we are a happy team. But also, not forgetting, not forgetting Special mention to the captain, Shafiq Kajimo, oh, yeah. who has uplifted the team. He has come on and he has, he has scored two goals, two crucial goals, and he's topping the... Whenever I think about Shafiq yes. and uh, the influence that he has on the team, mm -hmm. it, it reminds me of, of a British player who is now a coach doing wonders in Rangers. <laughs> the way he approaches the game, the way he, he stands up for his fellow players, the way he gives them that, that energy to, to go forward, the way he keeps on encouraging the guys on the pitch and off the pitch, I, I feel like Shafiq's influence is, is very similar to the kind of stuff that we saw Steven, Steven Gerrard do during his time back uh, when he was still the captain of, of that Liverpool team. Yeah, there is a lot that Shafiq Kajimo does off the cameras that very many people may not know. But uh, if, if, if you, we, we, we shall have him on the show anytime soon. Without and, a doubt. Uh, people, I'm very sure very many people will want to hear from him. Uh, we want to try to bring all the players onto the show. We shall be asking the fans who they want to have next on the show. So we want, like I say, this show is for the fans, to bring them closer. We want them attached to this. So we're going to come to a, 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 a time when we ask the fans who they want to host on the show. Probably they will have questions they would want the player to answer. So we have the player here live answering to their questions. And uh, Shafiq Kajimo is one of the players you would actually have a whole movie recorded while you're interviewing him. You could actually write a book and you could want to get another empty book of the similar page to write about him. He's a player who outstandingly does wonders much in, much out. You see, in football, consistency is key. If you want to be a great footballer, you have to... to only talk or tell people what to do on pitch. His numbers are also speaking for themselves. A player having five assists and two goals, uh, it shows you that he's, he's talking the talk. He's doing something right. Yes. That, that's amazing stuff from uh, a guy I personally respect like a lot. Shafiq, because I've, I've, I've seen him for, for a while and because he has been around for some yeah, time. And he has been putting in performance after performance. 
season after season. So that that speaks about the yeah, consistency. Yeah, and also you see, I think uh, what helped him up his game is the responsibility that he was given. You know, at times as a player, you may you may play knowing. Give credit where I do. The technical team, the URI Football Club technical team, has really done a very good job when it comes to recruitment. Because if you see the players that we tried to recruit uh, the previous season, uh, these are players who have something to build for us in the club. If you look at uh, Steven Desemokwala, we're talking about a player who was at uh, Maroons Football Club. Maroons Football Club was relegated last season. It's funny how he was the top scorer of the Maroons football club that was relegated. And we're talking about the teams that have quality. The URA, Vipers, KCCA, Villa, Express. These are teams that actually had quality and were far better than Maroons. These are, players, these are teams that have most creative players. But then for him to come out and outshine all the other players that have actually very good Attacking very good players. supply. Yes, very good supply, and they couldn't actually get in the goals. But Steven Mukwala from a relegated club came in and won the golden boot. So this shows you that he has the qualities. That is why we brought him on board, and he has not disappointed. And it's shocking that in our matches, ever since the return of Cromwell, because Cromwell Rothomio is a more of a number nine. He's more of a talisman. And out and out, right? Yes, he's more of a number nine, a striker, number nine. Steven Mukwala drifts off the left. In the last five games we've had, Steven Mukwala has been playing number 11. He does an Aubameyang. Yes, and he has been scoring the goals. So it, it actually shows you the qualities that he has as a player. Despite not leading the line as a number nine, as a striker, he's actually giving you the goals off the left. And he actually has some assists to his name too. So it shows you that even when he doesn't get the goals, the balls at the back of the net, he can also supply He's also involved in the goals. So those are the, type, the types of players we have. When they do not get on the score sheet, they are going to create something for the players to get onto the score sheet. At times, the games may not go as planned. You may have a bad day in office as a number nine because we have uh, Cromwell went three, four games without scoring a goal. He was giving blanks as a player. But then he assisted in some of the games. So, if you're to be a top class player, you must have something. They have 15 goals or maybe 13 goals. Uh, of course, 10. going by what he was able yes, to do last season. What, but let us not forget this is a new team. This is a new setup. At Maroons, he was the target man. He was the one everyone was feeding. He was the target man. Get the ball, give to Mugwala, it's in the back of the net. Everything was yes, going through everything him. Was going, everything was rotating through him. Everything that Maroons had to do had to rotate around him. But now, we are looking at a URA team where he's rotated. He was playing as a number nine because Cromwell was out, Dada Ibrahim was also out, also a number nine. So he kind of now has to get used to the new system that you are a place. Because maybe in another match he will be needed to play off the right flanks, number seven, not 11. In another match he will be needed to start as a number nine. So he is adapting to the team, it's a new team. 
there are those players who come into the team and they are right on track. They bang straight up. For us, we must say he has lived up to expectation. That's amazing. Because he's getting the goals. That's amazing. Speaking of systems, um, I, I know the coach we have is one that um, utilizes quite a number of them. He's, yeah. he's not the kind of man who's afraid to mix it up. Which, which system has really been uh, outstanding for, for, for the games that we've played so far? Which one has been very commonly used? You know the system United uses when it's playing the big games? It's called a down. That is the system we have actually been using. Uh, we, we have been using four players at the back. Actually, it's a 4-3-3. But then, we have the four players at the back. Then the three midfielders... L let me go by the, our last two games. We, had, uh, we have Majuega on the left, number three. We have Nyakojo, number four. We have Hudu, number five. And Mandela, number two. That is the back line. Those are four players. Then we have three players in the middle. The reason why it's called the diamond, it's usually a rectangle. So we have two blockers. We had, uh, in the game against uh, Chetume, we had, uh, Hud we had Boa and Teki Ivan. So those are the two blockers. And we have a player sitting in front of them. Now that is Shafika Jimu, our number eight. So that is a three midfield. Even against police, we had Serubidi and Mboa sitting midfield. And then Kajimu sits in front of them as a number eight. Now, we use three attackers. We've been using Dada. All those are number nines, meanwhile. Dada is a number nine, shifting off the right. Uh, Cromwell is a number nine, playing through the center. Mukwala Steven is a number nine, playing off the left flank, number 11. So I think that is why we have been getting the goals. The last game that we played without a goal was actually Wakiso Giants. And it was a draw, 0-0. Zero, zero. Out of 13 games that URA Football Club has played this season, we have only failed to score in one game. That was against Wakiso Giants. We have scored in all the games we have played in. That is why our, our, we, our it's, it's shocking that we have been tremendously good. On the when, road. On the road. The, the first opening match was Ambara City. We drew 1-1. One, one. Ever since that, we have <coughs> not drawn or lost any away game. We have actually won six away games in a row. On the bounce. Out of seven away games this season. So that shows you that the goals are coming. The system is working. And also we concede less goals. The game that we, if we have conceded most goals this season, there have been two goals in every game. That was against Mida, we won 3-2 in Toro. Then against Chitara, we won 3-2 also in Kavumba. The rest of the games, we've been scored 1-1-1-1-1 one, 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 one goal. So that shows you that the system, as much as you, are, you have three attackers in front, you are also mindful of the dangers that the opponent may bring on the attack. So that's why we have four defenders. And meanwhile, these four defenders are not necessarily four defenders. When we are attacking, we actually defend with two. They convert. Yes, that is Nyakojo and Boa. Those are the only defenders. Mandela is a right wing back. He finishes up to number 11. Majuega, we all know, he's a left wing back because he has played number 11 all his life. He's just a left wing back. So that means if we are attacking, we actually have all our number nines in the box and the wing backs stretching out wide. So I think that explains why we're getting the goal. It, it also speaks about the, the unpredictability that we have because you, you can't really know what your is going to bring to you. Yes, and uh, it, it, it reminds, that's why our, goal, our goals are evenly shared. Against uh, Busoga United, we won 1 0. And guess who scored? Seride. Moses. So it shows that even when the game is kind of refusing, you have a system that allows a lot of players to go forward. Because with this system, we literally have four players going forward. We have at uh, any time of the game. Yes, at any time of the game. Now, before these last three games, we used to play with one blocker in front of the midfielders. That used to be Tege Ivan. So we, we, we would have the same back four. Brian Majuega, Hudmulichi, Nyakocho, and then Mandela. At times, Moa would play in Hudu's position. Now, we would have only one blocker. 
that was Tege Ivan, sit in front of the defenders. Now, guess what? All the other players would be attackers. Seride is advance. an attacking midfielder. Mm -hmm. Kajumu Shafik is an attacking midfielder. Then we'd put Ojera on number seven, attacking midfielder. Mukwala Steven, number 11, attacking okay. midfielder. And Cromwell, I mean, Ojera attacking midfielder off the left winger. Uh, Dada, I mean, who? Mukwala Steven off the left and uh, Cromwell in the center. So this really shows you that the system that the coach is trying to use, very many people criticize coach Sam Simba for being a defensive guy. But if, you, if you're a person who has been actually watching you are a football club matches, you would hardly say these guys have actually defended well. And people on social media when I post our men of the match, they're like, but why is it that defenders are always winning? Uh, I, I think I would like to clarify that a little bit. Uh, Pilsner, Pilsner Lager are the sponsors of the Man of the Match Awards. So in our, in, in our club, we have players who are Muslims and they do not associate with anything alcohol. We have had games where Kajimu is a Man of the Match and he cannot take the award because it's Pilsner Man of the Match Award. So it meaning automatically you have to select someone else. Mm. And in such scenarios, you find us selecting a player who has outstood. Because you may find you have one, two, zero, but in actual truth, when the team was bringing at us all that they have, like against uh, police, Kajimu was the man of the match, but he couldn't take the award because it's, it's, it's alcohol related. So we had to look for a player, because police really, the last 10 minutes, we were back they, seated. They defended. brought everything. They brought everything. So you look at a player who helped bring the change in the team. But as for the systems, if you watch URA play, you will want to support URA and URA Pro Max if it's there. Without a doubt. Uh, Patrick, yes. this show is about the fans yeah. connecting with them. And uh, it's only fair that we, we get to you know send a shout out to the guys who are watching. Uh, we have... Kajuenje Moses, no surprises there. He's watching from uh, Boyo Gerere live. That's my hometown. Thank you for watching, Moses. Thank you for keeping with URA TV from way back. We also have Julius Motiaba who's saying niceness, just. He's probably appreciating the analysis that you're bringing to the table. You sound like a coach, man. Julius. Julius Mutiara. I played football. I played football way back. But uh, my, football, my football stopped in high school. Stop uh -huh. in high school, but uh, it's it's not playing. You don't need to be a coach. Uh, I've 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 happened to to do some analysis during games, and you know when when you love what to do, uh, what you do, you make sure that you learn from the best. I I must admit, our league is still trying to professionalize and be what other leagues, European leagues, are doing. So. You cannot learn from here if you want to better what is here. So I try to learn from... You're learning from yeah, the best. You, you watch how people analyze matches and how... It's, it's not just about the boys played well, they scored two goals. No, you have to go deep and analyze actually. The, game was, the yes. game was so technical. The game was so technical, tactical. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you can't say that. Actually, because fans do not watch these games. So it's us who are the eyes of the fans. You're watching the game on their behalf. Yes, you're watching the games on their behalf. So of what use are you if you actually cannot break down the system that the team is using? Because the coach may not have the time. The games are coming in quick and fast. Mm. We played on Tuesday. We're playing again on Saturday. So it shows you that there may be hardly no time. But we shall have the coach here one day. And the fans will ask anything that they want to ask. But talking about shout outs, uh, there is also a Twitter family, a URA football club Twitter family. All right. I'm very sure they are on, they are watching. They must be. Zaha is on, of course, definitely. There is Urban Boy. There is uh, a man who loves URA but doesn't want to talk about it, Omario. He should be calm. <laughs> he loves us in silence. He loves us in silence. I know he wants a jersey. We love Jazzes him. Jerseys have become jerseys. <laughs> I think if, if there is someone who can get me on my way back home, it would be Omari, who would hit me on the head. But our fans, we love you so much. 
we are working something out of recent people uh, you can realize I actually saw um, a, a new fan who, who has been on, on, on rampage lately uh, especially on Twitter who is that? putting out tweet after tweet uh, she's a lady Linda Linda Den. I, I, I don't know how you you were able to you know no, this secure is, that fan but she has been giving us some very good energy you see if if you're a big brand like you are a football club you definitely will have to secure such big brand iron sharpens iron without a doubt if you're doing great you're going to have the funds and she's not the only one that we've managed to secure we are we it's only that she has she had a jersey she could i managed to secure her a jersey that's why she's standing out but there are very many funds that we have recruited online because it's not a surprise that the richest man right now in the whole world is Jeff Bezos. He's a URF fan. No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm driving to a point. <laughs> but it can't be, you I, never know. You were going to shock me, brother. <laughs> no, you know, and you know what he owns? He owns Amazon. Mm. So, and you know what Amazon does? Online stuff. So, what am I driving to? The world has greatly shifted to I online. Know to digital stuff. So even now, if you're looking at people to recruit, if you're a football club and you're looking at fans to recruit. The fans are online. The fans are online because they do not watch the games. The fans don't watch the games. You literally record the games and report to them what is happening. So if you must recruit fans right now, the situation we're in because of the pandemic that changed everything, you have to do it online. The fans are online and you need to give them moments yes. on and off the pitch. Give them reasons as to why they should support the club. Um, it's disappointing that uh, as a club, our jerseys are kind of uh, not on market yet. The few that we had are also out of stock. Maybe that speaks about the, the hunger that the fans have for yes, the jerseys. Yes, the hunger that the fans have. The ones you bring... Yeah. Because we have, we have people who actually want jerseys on Twitter. There are about two of them, but they have not received their jerseys. How do I get a jersey? I want to buy a URA jersey. You want How to buy a URA jersey? Yes. Right now, you cannot pay for it because they are not on stock. But any time from now, I would say by next week, our jerseys are on the way. Actually, they are in the country, but they are in two clearing processes. But once the jerseys are cleared, by late next week, by late this week, by the end of this week or by next week, everyone who has ever dreamt of having a URL jersey can purchase one. Uh, we have we have Jumia, to, where do I go? Like, how do I get it? Right now, URA has a platform on Jumia. We have, if you go there, before you even think of jerseys, we have hoodies, we have masks, we have caps. These are things that people can order online. It does not have to be necessarily a jersey to show that you are FC fan. We have hoodies that are online. If you go to Jumia, just type in URA FC, you'll see the different types of merchandise that we have. We have caps, we have uh, hoodies, we have masks. As the jerseys come, we are also going to have them up on Jumia and anyone can order for them online and they'll have it delivered to them. Do you have power banks? Me, <laughs> URFC, those brand those, power no, banks. Those are some of the things that we are working on. We, 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 we have a whole list of merchandise that we must have on market for people. So, what I can tell the fans out there, the people who really support URF Football Club, the staff here, I think they are one of the greatest supporters, the administration the board members, you are a the mother body who have supported us from is the word go. A lot is going to come your way. Patrick, yes. there's something that has uh, pretty much surprised me this season. Mm. And uh, initially it was going to be a concern for me because one of our outstanding players, one of the boys who, are, who one can say has been the poster boy for URFC for a, a number of seasons, uh, he went to Chan. Yes. Had a very good turnout, scored uh, a wonder goal. Two wonder goals. Actually, two wonder goals. Stuff that he does. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And now, uh, of course, Africa was watching. And, and someone came in, offered a very good opportunity, and you know, the boy leaves the club. I was one of many who were really concerned. But now it's shocking that uh, just the other day, Linda Dane posted uh, a photo on her Twitter account showing the table, the status of the table. And guess who was on top? URA. URFC, and she was telling people to uh, take note of this, you know? And for me, the question in there is, Saidi has gone, Iniesta, yes. Cheyune, and the team is instead advancing forward, seemingly in a way that is better than when the young man was here doing his thing. What has been the trick? I wouldn't say him leaving, we are automatically performing better when he was there. Uh, when a player moves on in any institution, whether a staff or head of department, mm -hmm. there must always be continuity for any project to be successful. Now, that, that's what differentiates a big club or a big brand from any other brand. When someone leaves a brand and there is no continuity, that is not a brand to associate yourself with. Said Chayne, without any doubt, has been, last season was our best player. If we had player of the season awards, he would have scooped it. He scored the goals as a midfielder. He was actually our joint top scorer behind Kromer Rothonia. He has been tremendous. Yes. Over the years. Before he left, I remember Kajimu got injured in our opening match. Akine Simbaro. Kajimu was out for four games. And guess who was there as the captain? Said Chayne, not only as an, um, wearing a number, but also even in the, the performances. Duties. I remember the game we had against Villa that was 1 1 at Ndeje, our home. And with three minutes added on, Said Chayne scored in the 93rd minute to hand us the win. So even when the captain was not there, you felt he was taking on the team. But URA being a big brand and URFC being a big club as it is, we always ensure there is continuity when someone leaves. We have a number of midfielders. When Saidi left, you can realize Siri de Moses, who is arguably one of our best players ever since resumption in Feb, is one of our best players. He has basically been the revelation yes. of the team. So we brought in Serie Demosis, who has not been having enough playing time. So what does this show you that when someone leaves, show your importance and you'll be rewarded. We have very, non very many players. We have actually, I think, if you had to go by paper, by paper, you are a football club has the best squad in the league. The best midfielders. Well balanced. We have Shafiq Kajimu, <coughs> we have Seri De Moses, we have Mkubi Brian, we have Senyonga Mikidadi, we have Sirivili Ivan, we have Mutiaga Julius, we have Mtege Ivan. Seven midfielders seated there. We have Kaliga Hassan. Eight. Eight midfielders fighting for two spots or three spots, depending on how the court decides to use them. So, if you're a player and you have because you couldn't, on any day, no sane coach would bench Saeed Chain. You know his qualities. We saw what he did when he was brought on for the, two, the only two games that he played. The first game in Chan, he was brought in as a sub. He scored a wonder goal. I think that was the goal of, goal of the, the tournament. The tournament yes. And then he started a game and he scored off a set piece, a dead ball, a free kick. It's almost similar, like the one he scored. Same length. Yes. So it shows you that he's a player who has the qualities and he shouldn't be on the bench. Now, if you're a teammate, there's even no way, you know, okay, banter. You cannot be <laughs> you side competitor <laughs> and you want him benched for you to play. Then that would mean you are, a pro you are an enemy of progress. <laughs> if I was a player at your football club and I was competing with Saeed Chayne, 
and the coach puts me on the line up and Saidi is on the bench, I would move up to the coach and say, you know what, can, can I be on the bench? Can Saidi start? No wonder, you're not playing football. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, that was just a joke. But I'm trying I, to show you I, the I get qualities it. that he has. So, when there is chance, he moved away. Now, this is time for the players to show the coach. To show their faces. That I should also be starting. And we, of course, we are missing a player of his qualities. But there are players who can do, who can get the job done. And that now explains the change in system. Losing a player of Saeed, Saeed's caliber, that now shows we have to change into a 4-3-3 diamond setup. You're bringing in a player, Seri de Moses, who is not as, who does not play as Saidi, but can give you something different. So that means change of tactics. But still, not forgetting the end result is getting results as a team. Patrick, yes. thus far in the league, this season, we've only been beaten once. Yes. Okay? And in all the other games, we've uh, either had high score draws or we've, we've been able to get the result to, you know, defeat uh, our opponents. Mm. Which one of these games really stands out for you, like, so far? W what would you call your game of the season, as far as URA is concerned, URFC? You've taken me far. That is very easy for anyone to decide. KCC versus URA. So far has been the game of the season for us. Why? Why would you say We that? were away. And it's always a cracker. Without any doubt. KCCA is a hard team to beat at their home. Last <coughs> season, at their home, KCCA lost to only URIAFC. And we are the ones who beat them. How sweet it is to go back again another season still to do the same. Get the job done. And get the same score like 2-1 last season, 2-1 this season. And these are the games that each player wants to play. It's more of a derby, because these are our neighbors here. So it's a game that the players, for me, I would say, it's one that stood out for me. Because Villa, we've always beaten Villa. If you even look at head-to-head, -head, I think you are... Say that again. I'm, I'm sure Villa fans are also somewhere watching, and they would want to hear you say what you said on they, live camera. Villa, Villa fans, they might have the trophy which is okay, but if you compare the years of each club, the years URI was 1997, Villa is 1970 something. Clearly, you cannot compare on trophies, but when we look at head-to-head, -head, ever since we came into the Uganda Premier League, we have beaten Villa more times than it has beaten us. Actually, URA Football Club has the best head-to-head -head against any opponent in the league. We have beaten every opponent in the league more times than they have beaten us. In the last, apart from Vipers, we tied. It is shocking that ahead of our Vipers game, we tie on... Which is this Saturday. Which is this Saturday. And it's an early kickoff, 1 p.m. So by 3 p.m. we know the results. And it's a very interesting tie. You know why? We are going to talk about the Vipers game. Yes. But just before we do, because, you, you, you know, that's like the, the, the I, end I can't of, wait. I can't, that's the end I of the show. Wait. And we yes. are going to delve into that game because uh, this show is about previewing games that are yet to happen, reviewing games that have already happened, yeah. and uh, appreciating where it is we are coming from and where it is that we are going. So we are going to get some time to speak about this URFC Vipers beef, for lack of a better word, and you know, where it's going and where it is at the moment. But it is, like you said, one of those games that every fan should be interested in. But before we do, we, we were still talking about, you know, some of the, the games that have really stood out for you. And you're talking about the KCFC, your FC yeah, games. Yeah, the KCCA, Police, the games that have stood out. Police, down. is it because we, we, we really no. hammered them? Or the reason why... Are they like Villa? One of those teams that no, always get the result against? This is a team that it was third versus fourth. We were third on the table. They were fourth on the table. And it could have gone in any way. Yes, in, so meaning anyway. if they had beaten us, we would probably end fifth or even fourth. So the game, and I've, I've liked this 
two fixtures, the police and bikers. You know why? Because so much is at stake. You're playing police, which is below you. It beats you, it goes above you. You beat it, you stretch. Now, you're playing Vipers, you're tied on points, tied on everything. So, whoever wins the day takes the honor. Gets an edge. Yes. So, this shows you with KCCA, Darren Beef is there. Darren Beef is there. Not trophy wise, because when there is always banter being thrown, they bring in the trophies. You're not on our level because we, we have 11 titles. How many do you have? Four. So they are chicken out a little bit. But then when it comes to performance, the performance and the intensity, you know, all games are important. I won't lie. But the level of preparation is totally different for each game. The intensity, the dynamics for each game is different. When URA is playing Vipers, when URA is playing KCCA, when URA is playing, uh, let me say, not demeaning other clubs though, mm. but this, is, this happens to any club. When you are preparing for a big match, there's a reason why it's called a big match. Intense, the level of intensity of preparation is way above normal. So that's why that game stands out for me. For the police game, the reason why it also stands out, it's because we needed to go on top of the table. Somehow, somewhere, luckily enough, our opponents at the top, Express, were beaten. So our win meant we automatically go above them. So that is why that game stood out for us. We were on top of the table. The win took us at least to the table for some time before Vipers won. But we are joined top. We still tie on points with Vipers. So we are also on top of the table. Patrick, would you want to talk about the Express game? The one we lost 1-0. Yes. I can talk about it. Please. We deserve to lose. There was a lot of banter going on the next day. Yeah. Online and offline. You see, the banter is the fun bit of it. And football is a fair play game. You don't be a bad loser. I see some of my friends being bad losers and they are beaten. Actually, I think the, the, the only football club in Uganda that keeps treating even after a loss is URA Football Club. They beat us, but I keep tweeting. KCCA, we beat them and they got lost for two days. But for the Express game, everyone admitted, the players admitted, the coach admitted, everyone who saw the match admitted we were very powerful. We did not play like a URA football club is supposed to play. It's definitely one of those games everyone wants to forget. <laughs> Myself. We forgot because <laughs> yourself. Ever since and the fans. Ever since that loss, we have won all our games and drawn one. So it shows you how fast we moved on. The ability and, to bounce back. And you know, we lost and had the away game against Maida. Mida in Toro, and we won 3-2. We had already forgotten about the Express because we were still within touching distance to the top of the table, even after we lost. So it shows you that we made, and in football, you have to move on so fast because we lost to Express and had a game in the next three days. You're not going to cry the next day because you must train and prepare for the next game. That's very true. Because it was even a trip. We lost to Express. The next day we had to travel direct to Tororo because and we had to prepare for the match. So it shows you that the level at which you must, the mental stability must be top notch. Your ability to you know, get yes. organized and yes, go, go for player, the next result. must be top notch. Patrick, today is Thursday. Yes. Tomorrow is Friday. Yes. Then the next day will be Saturday. Yes. And at 1 p.m., we okay, it's too early to call it a title decider, but the two top teams that are leaving the table are, are going to go head to head. And uh, I, I don't encourage sports betting, but if I was a sports better, where would you want me to put my money? Not because I'm a URF football club <laughs> fan and an employee, I would give URF a win any day. 
the last time vipers came they but, were but you said that while looking into the camera not because i am a ura football club fan or staff or employee or public relations people may think it's pr i'm making pr so that people can no not because of that i would give ura a, a heads up on the saturday match against vipers ura is winning the game with valid reasons please go in there those are my <laughs> thoughts you asked me yes, who i, I would did. give a heads up i would give you ura but this is football what are your reasons i want it to appreciate. could show anyway if you look at my reasons going head to head we tie on points with vipers we have 30 30 it's surprising how we tie on everything we have both played 13 games we have all uh we have all one nine vipers and you are eight same games played same games same played, wins same wins same, same draws same losses the only thing that is different is goal difference they've scored a little bit more than we yeah they've scored more goals we don't get to score those goals and i think that is where we need to work out more we need to get give teams five goals six goals seven goals that is something that we need to work on you talked about um head to head yes because you you've definitely given me the the season comparative you've broken the numbers and the numbers are almost evenly matched not almost but they're evenly matched apart from the even at that that's why i said almost okay, because yeah. we we see a team that is uh edging the other by way of uh goal scored you know it's important yeah. goal difference is yeah, very paramount we've, we've seen titles being yes, decided because of goal, because difference. Of goal difference so uh, would, wouldn't it be uh, a plausible argument for someone to say that because of that they they have an edge even going into this game no because if you look at our head to head for the fans out there who do not know how it is in the last 20 games ura a has won 6 vipers has the won. last 20 games yes. played between ura and vipers and vipers ura a has won 6 vipers has won 6 we have drawn eight, time, eight times meaning automatically we have all lost six times that's already also evenly matched but the last time vipers and ura played at the arena of visions in deje university where our home is we beat vipers 3-1 yet they were table leaders isiagi daniel said cheyune and chrome rotomi were the goal scorers for us putting that aside ever since you are a football club moved to the arena of visions in deje last year till that you are fc has lost only two matches that was the last game last season this against is, police fc 2-1 loss it is a slaughterhouse of sorts and then also 1-0 against express those are the only two games we have lost and we have drawn mm. only three the rest are wins So, however much football is football of course, but it shows you that it's going to be a hard game. It gives you the confidence going into this game and uh knowing that whoever gets the result will actually take the table. Yeah. I think it's one of those games that no one wants to lose. No one wants to lose, but again, in football there are three results, three results. That's the beauty of football. It it doesn't have to be if it's not uh, a knockout, if it's a league it doesn't have to be there is always one win and no there is a loss a draw and a win we can do a statement and we are all at 31 31 vipers may twin we may twin so that is what is on ground but for me following the statistics following everything and following the form that you are at is and by the way for in the last 5 matches for each team ura a is the only team that has won its last five matches in the whole league ura is the only team that has won its last five matches in the whole league so that 
automatically gives you a heads up and a nod for you are to win this match. Patrick, this is the very last question that I'm going to ask, then we shall call it a wrap. It's been beautiful having you on the show. Thank you. It's been awesome. Uh, actually, it was a dream for a, a good uh, amount of time, and now we've been able to, you know, bring it home. You see, they say starting is always the hardest problem. You know, and we are here now. The show is here, and it's going to be a mainstay every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. Yeah. And uh, it's a show for the fans. And uh, at this very point, I'm going to ask you a question that should be asked by the fans. I know many would want to ask this question. I keep up with this game on Saturday. If I want to watch it, where do I watch it from? If I want to get a, a feed of the results as they come in, I, I, I want to be at, uh, at the pitch with you when, when you're having this game. How do I do it? Uh, you see, thank you so much for the question. The world is revolving so fast and your football club moves with technology. Right now, the fans are not allowed into the stadium. But, luckily enough, the game is going to be broadcast live on Sanyuka TV. 1 p.m. on Saturday. 1 p.m. The game is an early kickoff at 1 p.m. Some people, the fixture was changed. The fixture that was released shows 4 p.m. But it was changed because of uh, reasons. So our game on Saturday is at 1 p.m. For those who have start times, the game will be live on Sanyuka TV. However, if you do not have start times, URA Football Club has social media platforms. On Facebook, URA Football Club. On Twitter, URA Football Club or at URAFC underscore official. On Instagram, URA Football Club. We do regular updates right from, from the kickoff. morning. We let you know of what you should expect from the match, how the previous games have been, who, is, who you should expect we give you all the updates, all the, the statistics, lineup. all the analysis. We try to compare URA with Vipers. We do this before even kickoff. So what does this mean? It means before even the match kicks off, you can start enjoying the match. You can we put you in the mood to actually look ahead of the match. So, and we do live match updates. Live match updates on time. You can follow our Twitter handle following the match and you, you feel as though you're watching. It's like reading a novel and it's like you're watching the real action. So that is what happens. We give you minute by minute match updates. Whatever happens, we put it up there for you to see. If you cannot watch it live. So for those of you who would want to follow the match, if you have start times, it will be live on Sanyuka. If you do not have start times, please follow your football Get on online. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and also because the world is revolving. Every after a match, we upload for you the highlights. So you can, if you've not watched the match, you can wait for the highlights on our YouTube channel, which is called URA Football Club. You can go, like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The videos are always there. Comment, engage, uh, do, do share the banter. Yes. Everything is okay. Yep. Um, Patrick, parting shots. We are about to say adios to the fans who have been watching the very first episode. And... Uh, the, the, the idea is that they keep coming back because yeah. we, we shall be sharing a lot. We shall get some fans on set. We shall get the players on set. We shall get the coaches on set. This is your show and it's all about connecting with the fans. That's why we call it the URFC plug. And uh, it's been a pleasure hosting Patrick, a.k.a. Pato, on this particular show. Patrick, get to salute the fans and that's it from all of us. Uh, for our fans, those who are also not our fans, we welcome you to join us. You can be our fan from now on. I'm very sure there are those who have become our fans just because of this. And not to brag, I'm sorry, but URA Football Club is the only club that has officially a live show in the whole country. Man, the bar has been set high. Adios. <laughs> But yeah, it's only just the start. As I told you, the show is for the fans. And uh, this is just the beginning. There is a lot more that you should look out for. Uh, team statistics, team news. We shall be previewing matches before. We shall be previewing matches after we have played them. So 
All we can tell you is uh, to stay tuned every Thursday from 3 to 4 p.m. and also get involved. Go down to our socials, comment about what you want us to discuss about and we shall always be here to talk about everything. And please, it's your show. Anytime soon we are going to have the players, yourself, you're there watching, we shall have you on set and everyone will be watching you dissect everything about the club. Thank you so much for today and please stay tuned and follow all your football club social media handles. Thank you. Thank you.